Hey everyone, welcome back to Coffee with Carrie. Today we're at more of a LaCroix with Carrie kind of day. So it's afternoon instead of morning, um, but thank you guys for finding and joining and, and coming with along with me. We got a lot of questions um, to answer. Still got a pile from some from last year. Um, asked, um, this gentleman asked about some recovery experiences where saved the day by anticipating a near disaster, stepped in to prevent things without maybe mourners knowing uh, about on the day of the service. Um, there are always <laughs> some near misses or things that maybe we, we do to navigate around a little hiccups that may encounter, um, you know, people come late or pastors don't come prepared or we don't quite have the music. So we end up just playing it from our phones um, because we don't have a CD or we have to whip together a video last minute because the family didn't come in and see if their burned disc would play or, you know, all sorts of little things that are not big, but in the picture, big picture, it might mean a lot to the family if they did go wrong. Um, so there are things that can happen that we do navigate around. So we're just, we're like the, the Wizard of Oz. I say that we're kind of behind the curtain and just making sure things go along smoothly. And we do, you know, have to make sure that little things are right in place. Hey, everybody, and welcome. Have you ever run into um, preachers who are gender biased? Um, I, they're asking about, so Lauren uh, had talked about, um, Lomas Funeral had talked about a preacher who wouldn't be buried. And I just respect the religion, but otherwise I've never really felt gender bias by anybody. I Maybe I'm just naive to it and I don't recognize it. Um, people do often say, oh, don't lift that. I'll get it. I'm fine with that. Um, you know, there are times so where I'm like, okay, I really need to be helping you lift. I'm, I'm, I'm very strong. I'm good. Um, so there are times I have to say, no, 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 chivalry aside, I am helping. So Hey, Steve, over in the UK, it depends on the grave, if it's a double depth or if it's a single depth grave. But typically, um, a lot of cemeteries are two people per grave as long as one is cremated. You can, some cemeteries do four per grave if they are all cremated. So there's different configurations. Um, oh, Zane, your mom's wig was on backwards. I hope you told them to turn it around. Please tell me you told them to turn it around. Um, someone also asked about cycles of death and seasonality of mortality and people dying in different seasons. I see often a surge in January of deaths and then in like July, June, July, like the kind of the midsummer. Um, a lot of people do hold on through the holidays into January, which is, and it's also kind of peak sickness season. So, you know, people, hold, if they're maybe dying, they try and hold on, which is a thing. You can hold on and you can let go. Um, a lot of times people do do that. And I hear hundreds of stories of this. So it's not just one or two people telling me that mom held on or mom let go. Hundreds of stories of this that people hold on or let go. So people hold on through the holidays and then will die in January um, after the holidays are over or people that are maybe already predispositioned to sickness and are weak, then from illness, you know, flus and colds and overexertion during the holidays, shoveling snow, things of that nature do die from those as well. Um, same with summer, heat, um, overexertion type thing. Um, sorry guys, flipping through my pages here. So, um, if my brother was to die in California, how would I get him back to Missouri? What are the mechanisms are doing that? So always act as if 
if the person is traveling and they don't live in another area that they're going to be having services there, always call your local funeral home as if the person died locally. That local funeral home is going to then employ somebody where the deceased is to bring the deceased into their care, do the preparation work, and then transport back to you or you drive and bring them back. So they will look at the, the cost. Will the airplane ticket or will um, driving to go get them be more cost effective? So we'll look at those two options to see which one is better to do for you. Um, but it is typically less expensive because a lot of funeral homes will give a professional rate to another funeral home. Whereas if you call the funeral home, let's say in California, if your brother died in California and said, I need, my brother has died there. I need you to go get him and embalm him. And then that's it for now. And so you employed them. That costs maybe more than if the funeral home from Missouri called them. So always call your local. Now, if let's say your brother was going to have a service and everything in California and then fly back to Missouri and have a service and everything in Missouri, then you do need to employ two funeral homes because you're going to be doing a lot with each funeral home. And so it's not just a kind of transaction and a um, trade transaction with the local funeral home where his body is, you're going to also have to buy a casket on that end and do a lot of other things on that end. So it really depends on what you're doing at each place. Um, but if it's just that they died there and you need to get them home, call your local funeral home. Hey everyone, um, Decomposition and putrefaction are the same thing or what the differences are. I have two minute videos on both of those. So go check out the two minute videos on decomposition and putrefaction. Oh, Joanne, these are good. That's a great question. So I do have a video on kind of taking care of myself and every I'm, I'm, I'm working now 2020 on how to relax a little bit. I'm a very control type A, everything in its place type person. If I go on trips, I like to have so everything planned. 2020, I'm going to try and see if I can roll, just roll with it a little more um, and relax a little more. And I think to me, that's going to be a way for me to learn better relaxation. Um, saying, I can do this later. Prioritizing a little more is going to be a new key thing for me as well. Um, there's sometimes I put added pressure on myself, which I don't need to, that maybe I need to get something done before I really need to actually have it done and being a little more in the moment with my kids and my husband and making a little more time for them. That's just casual time that is not planned and organized and that's running around crazy. So those are things I'm going to focus on in 2020. That's my goal. You can now all hold me to it. Um, just trying to get my head away from the funeral business, which is hard when you do YouTube on funeral and you work at the funeral and you mentor students that are funeral students. So, uh, my life is about funerals essentially. Uh, so it's kind of hard to get away from it, but I'm going to work on trying to do that even more. So, um, work doesn't stress me out as much. Um, it's pressure on myself to get things done in a timely manner. That's more of what my pressure comes from. So the human composting, I really am excited about any new disposition that comes along um, that meets needs of people. And when natural and green options are the needs of people and what people are wanting, I think it's a great option. I'm interested to see how many people choose it when it does become available and you know revenue and if it can be effective as a business. You know, something has to be effective as a business for it to carry on. Um, so just like anything, I'm interested to see how that plays out. But it is a really interesting new option that is coming about. I'm doing a video next week with the modern mortician who's down in Texas. And um, she is very focused and um, diligent about all things um, green and natural and you know, new options and stuff. So we're going to be discussing composting actually next week in that video. So watch for that to come soon. 
Oh, songs to be played at funerals. Um, I, so I don't know if the songs I would choose I've ever played at a funeral. I would play um, the song Fast Ride by, or not Fast Ride, Fast Cars by Tracy Chapman. Um, and, uh, oh, shoot, what's the name of it? Um, something Place by... My mind is not working on today. I feel like it's a Monday, guys. Um, I'll come back to you on that song. But this the song, there's one for my the better better place. I'm trying to sing the song. Feels like I've opened my eyes again. Yeah. Yeah, it's a better place. It's called Better Place. Um, it's a song I sing to my little girls a lot. Um, and uh, I sang to them a lot during a certain period of time with them. And, um, it's just kind of one would be for t- kind of a song with my husband and one is for my kids. And they're just songs that were important to me during certain times in our lives together. So, um, she, who was being cremated told my friend that he had bathed the aunt. She said, she didn't need to know that. Is there a need to bathe? No, you don't need to bathe, but some people do that just out of just respect and tradition in some cultures, that's what you do. Um, so it just depends. Have you ever cried during an embalming? Not during. I've cried. I've, I've had some tears and a moment right before starting a few embalmings. Um, just to kind of, as I'm wrapping my head, maybe around um, looking at a child that's died or someone who was murdered or different situations, a family member, and then it's into work mode. So it doesn't last long. Um, I have cried after that. I've held my crap together. And then as soon as it's over and I've done my job, then I might, I might have a good cry. Um, but it's not often truly. Oh, Naomi. Oh, that's all so heartbreaking. Uh, Naomi's cousin died and young kids and a husband. That's so sad. Yeah. I can only imagine it's a great song, but when you hear songs that are played so often, they don't lose their meaning, but they lose the emotion to them. So still, I can only imagine does get me sometimes, um, at funerals. I would, Ooh, Alleluia by Pentatonix, their version. I think I would want that played as well. I really like their version. Um, the Canadian tenors version, I played on repeat for about two hours when I was in labor with my daughters. And it was kind of like my, my Zen, just white noise moment, um, to get through about two hours of labor with my daughter. So, um, no, once in a while groan. Um, but it's not a groan. It's more just emitting air and it passes across the vocal cords and no, they don't move. Um, Yep. That sounds like, um, cremated remains stuff. Sounds pretty, pretty normal. I'll see you again is a great song as well. I only like the first beginning part of it. I don't like when the tempo of it changes though. Um, let's see. Do you often put glasses on the deceased for viewing? Actually? Yes. Because, um, it's not supposed to be like they're sleeping. You want them to look like they might have looked alive just with their eyes closed. And if the person always wore glasses, they're going to look weird to everybody without the glasses on. So you want to put the glasses on them so that they do look like themselves. You don't want them to just look like they're sleeping. I kind of like this this uh, topic, though, of, of songs. Um, Lauren and I were going to do a wine about funerals. Um, drinking some wine and talking about songs from funerals, some of the worst we've played, some of the ones that we're tired of playing, but are good songs. Um, and some of them that we want to play for our own funerals. So I need to schedule that in with Lauren to get that done because funeral songs is a great topic. And I have played some crazy off the wall songs, but it means something to somebody there. Um, but that's a great thing when you're listening, when you have to remember when you're picking songs, 
if it's an off the wall song and it only means something to one person there, it's not going to be a great moment for everybody there. So you need to pick something that is a little more universal to everybody that's there. That means something maybe to more than just one individual. Um, and how are you going to feel hearing that song again? So there's great songs that people have talked about that they thought about playing, but they didn't want to ruin the song by always having to think about a funeral every time they heard it. They just wanted to think about the deceased when they heard it again, not think about being at the funeral for the deceased. So that's also something really important to think about is how do you want to remember that song? Do you want to remember it being at a funeral or just think about the deceased? So yeah, Alleluia is just an awesome song, man, isn't it? Amanda, the cremated remains, they're not ashes. They're cremated remains are never going to be 100% just the deceased because the retort is porous. So there may be a fleck here or a fleck here of somebody else. Um, people do go in and vacuum them out sometimes afterwards, the, you know, the other cremated remains, but that means you're missing 0.1% of your cremated remains when they had to vacuum them for the other person. So there's never a 100% situation um, that I have ever seen happen. When I get to where I'm going is also a great one. Holds in the floor of heaven is a good one. Um, I'm trying to think of some other good ones we've played. Annie's song. When someone passed that had MRSA or very contagious, does a MRSA ever die? Is there ever a point that coming in contact with it isn't dangerous? Um, yes, the, these germs do die eventually. Um, there's just different shelf lives to them. I don't know how else to, you know, there's different points that they're going to die um, in the body. Um, sometimes it's up for contention, like HIV for forever, AIDS was forever a question. Now, how long is it going to live after the person's, you know, after the person's died, how long can it live? Um, so, we just treat everybody as if they are still contagious. Um, MRSA is a big one because we're rolling the body. So that as that body is emitting any air, it can still be coming out um, and can still be con of concern to us. Um, Courtney, that's illegal. So you cannot stop a family from seeing their loved one. Never. Completely, highly illegal. You have every right to see your family member. You may just have to sign some extra paperwork um, or transfer them to a different funeral home, but they can't stop you from seeing your family member. Stuff. But does that mean I have some of his remains then? Like I have a box full. It says his name on the box. Yes. If you should have, if you receive back the box from the crematory of your loved one, they should all be in that box, just not 100.00% of them because of these particles that get left along the process and particles from other people that were left around the, along the process that may have been gotten into your particles or into your cremated remains. But yes, they're processed placed in that box, inside a bag, inside the box typically, and then given to the family. Oh, Courtney. Yeah, it's unfortunately people don't know what they don't know. And that's why one thing about this channel is knowing your rights, knowing your right to see a contract sign, you know, like a breakdown on the contract, to see a general price list, to see your loved one. There's these rules that people need to know about so that way they can advocate for themselves if they go to a funeral home and know what they're talking about. I just had a lady write me last week and she was working with a funeral home and they wouldn't give her a general price list, um, but they told her she owed this money. And I said, they cannot tell you to pay for something you didn't sign for. And especially if they're not giving you a general price list. So you need to tell them, I will call the state. 
um, if you can't provide this, and I will call the Federal Trade Commission. And if you show them that you understand and know what your rights are, then they will understand that they can't take advantage of your rights. So it's advocating for yourself. Steph, um, yes, we sell urns at our funeral home. Um, most funeral homes sell urns or they're all over online to, to order and purchase. So I have not watched the Casketeers yet, guys. I know I'm let you, letting you down. It's one of those things when you go home from work at night, do you really want to do work? <laughs> do you want to watch a movie about your work? You know, most doctors don't want to go home and watch ER. Most Lawyers don't want to go home and watch LA Law. I don't, you know, you don't want to go home and watch a, a show about what you do. Um, so I just haven't watched it yet. It's bad. It took me, I don't even know how many years to watch Six Feet Under. I think I just watched that last year and that's been over for how long? So, yeah. Yes, I've done, um, I've gone in on Christmas on all sorts of different holidays to bring people into our care. Oh, in a recent convert to Islam, how can I ensure legally that I am buried in accordance with the traditions of Islam, despite some family members not approving of my decision to convert to Islam? That's a great question. Um, it depends on your state and the laws of who is going to oversee your burial. Uh, if there is a disposition designation in your state, you can choose who gets to dictate what happens to you afterwards. Otherwise, you don't get a say. Um, so you just need to put in charge of your affairs, the right person, get it all in writing with the funeral home. So it's all, it's, it's all in, you know, writing. Um, it's a big question right now, like with, with gender, gender is a huge discussion, you know, in the news and in everywhere that, if someone, you know, if, if at birth and medically someone maybe is a female, but they were living as a male and maybe friends want the person, you know, their viewing should be as the way they lived life and in the clothing they wore on every day and such, but the family then chooses to have visitation and everything with that person kind of shown as female, it's against what that person would want, but they get the choice if that gives you an idea. So there are situations where you just, when you're gone, you're gone. You don't get to the say of what is done. Um, it's just the laws in some states um, and it's not right, um, but that's how the laws are written. Thank you, Steph. You're so sweet. Um, no, Sherry, they, Batesville is very hush hush about um, caskets. So they will, um, they have told me they don't allow videoing at their facility. I do have a facility that makes caskets that's offered to let me come. Um, it's just, way down. I think it was, is it Missouri, Arkansas? No, I'm questioning where it is. Um, so it's just whether, oops, getting there um, to do a video there. So that is one thing I'm hoping to show you, like some caskets being made. There's a guy in Texas who I've gotten some requests to go do a video with him. He makes very custom, very amazing caskets. Um, so I feel like I can go spend a whole week in Texas just doing videos like nonstop of everything in Texas. So yes, Steph, um, I've done a couple of videos actually on taking care of family members, um, grandmas, grandpas, and my niece um, when she died. So definitely some videos about that uh, that I have. Um, I think one's called... Uh, yeah, I can't remember what they're called. Oh, taking care of, look for family members as a, as a name on my, my YouTube, um, should be in there. 
Oh, where's some other questions, guys? I've got a couple more minutes here just to do a couple more questions. So, hey, Nancy in Scotland. I almost went up to Scotland. We had to decide. We were doing, when we were over in the UK, we were um, trying to decide if we were going to just go to Paris for the day, which we did end up doing um, on the Eurostar. But we thought, man, we could just hop a quick flight up to Scotland for a day and then fly from Scotland down to Paris, right? Who, why not? But it, we, we, we didn't want to dilute our time in any one place um, by making it too quick. And I would have been so sad going to Scotland and not being there for a few days or a duration because I really want to go to Scotland. Oh, so exciting. You're going to head over to um, Cincinnati College of Mortuary Science. Is there ever a time you wouldn't do an open casket? So open caskets really up to the family. I have people who look phenomenal and the family still wants to do a closed casket. Maybe because the person really didn't want to be seen after they died or whatever the situation um, that the person looks wonderful and they just want to do a closed casket for whatever choice. Maybe the family just is uncomfortable with the casket being open. Um, I would say if there was smell would be a factor to me, if it was extreme decomposition, um, even if we could get the, to where the family could maybe view them for a few minutes and then have to close the casket in a ceiling casket because of the smell, um, that might be a reason extreme fire and burn would be another. If all of them is not there, dismemberment, maybe we don't have body parts um, for the viewing would be another. How do you take care of a mutilated body? Do you dress it or just lay in the casket as it is? Um, I would, it, well, it really depends on the situation. Um, if I would embalm all the pieces, if it was going to be a burial, embalm the pieces. I mean, theoretically, if you had all, all the body parts, you could embalm each piece part, reassemble, you know, suture together, put the person in a full plastic undergarment, as you've seen on my most recent video about the plastic undergarments, um, and then dress them and do viewing from there. So it's, it's probable to do, um, you just have to reassemble. So a lot of the tragic and a lot of accidents and stuff is more about us putting somebody back together, which as an embalmer is really fulfilling to get to put someone back together after they've been harmed and after they've suffered damage. I think that's why when I embalmed my niece, it was therapeutic for me to go through that process because I got to put her back together after the autopsy. I got to put her back together after what had been done to her. If I had had to cut into her and start from scratch, I think from a whole you know, perfect version of her, then it would have been different. But because I got to put her back together, there was a very therapeutic um, time that I got to, you know, because I got to go through those steps with her. Um, stuff, I'm guessing they were telling you that has tattoos were in place because they can't, they don't take skin that has tattoos in them. I don't believe. So maybe they were just reaffirming to you that his tattoos were still on his body. OJW, all of my videos, like every single one, some of them I'm a little embarrassed. They're like really archaic and not, not the best, but, oh, Marla, I am so sorry. That's, oh, so sad, but, oh, my goodness. Like, it's, it's, if, if the only positive comment I ever receive is something like Marla just told me that she watched a video and felt a little more capable of making funeral arrangements for her loved one. If that's the only positive comment I've ever received, it makes me want to keep doing videos because it makes me feel 
so fulfilled to know that even one person feels more capable, more prepared, more encouraged, more empowered to make a funeral arrangement for a loved one and to do what they feel they need to do when the death occurs. Like that's, that's everything to me. So thank you for sharing that so much. Thanks so much, Joanne. I'm hoping 2020, I've been saying 2020 for like a month now. I've been writing it. Like I'm just ready for this year. Thank you, Mac. This is our year two, Mac. You and I, my friends, we're meeting because I'm coming to St. Louis this year on burned bodies. Um, I don't know what to do in a two minute for burned bodies. Um, there's not a lot. Maybe how, yeah, I could come up with something for two minutes. Thank you guys so much. You're so nice. Um, all of your things. There's not make up questions. It's all just nice things. Thank you. You guys make me very humbled. So really excited about 2020 and everything to come. I have so many lists right now going. It's so embarrassing, like the to-do list and videos to edit and things to get done. So the editing uh, without pulling some all-nighters, which it's hard to give up my sleep to edit videos, guys. I love you, but... <laughs> <laughs> I need at least a little sleep. Um, so I've got my England videos are the first up on my docket is to get one of those done for you. And for my, my friends at Uden funeral home that I was at, because I just have the, I can't even explain the level of respect I have, I have for the guys there. So, um, Thank you guys. I am in Michigan, Louise. I'm in Southwest Michigan, kind of around Kalamazoo, Grand Rapids area. So, all right. Thank you guys. Ooh. Oh, JW, you're in Louis St. Louis too. So maybe you and Mac can be my, like, when I do my meet and greet, it'll be us three. <laughs> so, all right, guys. I will see you soon um, next Wednesday. I'll be back here and look for videos coming up. See you later.